the lady comes to Paris. Aung San Suu Kyi is now in the French capital on the latest stop of her European tour. Like in every country she's visited, the pro-democracy campaign has been met with the honours befitting a head of state or cultural icon. I don't think I think of myself as a feminine Che Guevara or a feminine anything. I simply think of myself as myself. And I do not particularly want to uh, promote a personality cult, but I also understand that movements do need faces. And I think I represent the human faces of the movement for democracy in Burma. This is the 67-year-old's first trip to the West for nearly a quarter of a century. It began in Geneva on the 13th of June at the UN International Labour Conference. Despite her long journey, Su Chi gave a rousing speech, calling on the international community to invest in and help build her country. When you go back to your own countries, please encourage your governments, your businesses, your workers to help us to build the kind of society that will ensure the future of our country. Next stop, Norway, where Suu Kyi picked up the Nobel Peace Prize she won in 1991. At the time, she was being held under house arrest by Burma's military junta, and her son accepted the award on her behalf. Last Monday, Suu Kyi travelled to Dublin, receiving a rock star welcome with a concert held in her honour. There she met with two of Ireland's biggest names, President Michael D. Higgins and U2 frontman Bono. The singer presented her with Amnesty International's highest human rights prize, the prestigious Ambassador of Conscience Award. A day later, the Burmese MP was in the UK, celebrating her birthday with a doctorate from the University of Oxford. It was here that Suu Kyi came to study in the 1960s and met her husband, Michael Aris. In this city, they raised two children together until she left for what should have been a short visit to Burma in 1988. She stayed on to pursue politics. The couple saw each other for the last time in Burma in 1995. He died in England four years later. After Oxford came London, where Suu Kyi became only the second woman after Queen Elizabeth II to address both houses of parliament. In a highly symbolic speech, she reiterated just why she'd come to the West. And so I'm here, in part, to ask for practical help. Help as a friend and an equal. In support of the reforms which can bring better lives, greater opportunities to the people of Burma, who have been for so long deprived of their rights and their place in the world. Throughout this trip, the international icon has talked of national reconciliation and asked for investment in Burma. She heads back there on Friday, where she'll see if either of those ideas will bear fruit.